Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Thursday, February 24th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about the tool of technical analysis and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Before I get to the watch list, I first just wanna personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class that I'm offering here very soon. So if you're liking what you see as I go through the video and you wanna learn more about this tool, how it can be used, how it should be used to build consistency as a trader, then certainly get signed up for the free class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box. If you're watching at my site, there's an area somewhere right there on the webpage that you can click on to get signed up. So again, if you're liking what you see and you can realize the value that this tool has to offer, then certainly get signed up for the free class. Real quick, a couple of clarification points before I get to each stock. First off, you're not crazy. That number right there will be moving around for each of these charts because yes, the market's still open for a little bit of time, but I like to do these videos when the market's still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day type price movement. But the, most, uh, the market's also close enough to being done for the day where everything that I talk about will still be relevant for Thursday. And then next, I will be using the 30 minute time frame. So if you're a beginner to charts, all that means is that each one of these candlesticks here, as they're called, represents 30 minutes worth of time. So first one here to look at, ticker symbol IMPP. Did this in yesterday's video and just got that much more follow through today with the big gap up. And there was just, I mean, the volume on Wednesday was already, or excuse me, on Tuesday was already impressive. But now you look at the volume today on Wednesday and just that much larger. So pointer being, there's gonna be that just that many more people paying attention to it, uh, you know, moving forward. So the first update that needs to be done comes about based on a foundational rule in charting, which states when levels of resistance are broken and closed above, they tend to act as support. So that 85 cent mark is gonna be one of the newer levels of support, but it's not totally relevant now, given how far the price is up. So what I'm gonna do is just actually adjust this level up to a more relevant and near term level of support. And that's gonna be right there at the dollar which makes sense. It's that big, you know, kind of round psychological number of a dollar. And you can see that's already played out, generally speaking, a couple of times with holding that support. So keep an eye on that mark moving forward from the support side of things. And then as far as areas of resistance are concerned, two main levels stand out. First area right here at what is that? A dollar seventeen. And then after a dollar seventeen, just where the uh, you know price got rejected three times earlier on in the day, and that's at $1.28. So if this upwards move continues and it gives some credit or credits due, as we watch the last 30 minutes here, very, very impressive last 30 minutes. So we'll see if that carries into uh, Thursday or not. And again, you have these next couple areas of resistance right there. So we'll see what happens with it, but no doubt about it, big action today. Next one, PLTR. And now that we have another entire day's worth of data, there's a very straightforward pattern here that a lot of people are now really gonna be paying attention to. So I don't wanna come across like this is some sort of great discovery or that this is some sort of special talent that I have. The exact opposite, actually. I assure you, a lot of people around the world have noticed this pattern. And I say all that because when a lot of people are watching the same levels, wondering the same things about a pattern, call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, call it whatever you want, it can produce some very dynamic movements. So the first part of the pattern, nothing has changed. You still have this $10.30 mark, that green line right there. But the level that has definitely, you know, kind of solidified the pattern is look right where it got rejected from today, right up at that high right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this area of resistance up to that point, which then when you correspond it to the past history, oh look, it's also been rejected there already before. So point being, the pattern that we now have is just a good old fashioned sideways channel. And the big question mark moving forward is who is ultimately gonna win this back and forth battle? Are the bulls gonna win with a break to the upside or the bear is gonna win with a break to the downside? That's what remains to be seen, but there's no doubt about it, that at this point, bottom of the channel support $10.30, Top of the channel resistance up there at eleven dollars and twenty-five cents, and not just a question of who's ultimately gonna, you know, win out here. That'll be the, the main dynamic that I, I think most people will be watching because again, the pattern now officially really just sticks out like a sore thumb. Next one, AMC, and the downtrend just continues. Updates need to be done. I'm gonna first just do some house cleaning to get rid of that line. Served its purpose for now and not really relevant anymore. But what I'm actually very curious about now. In fact, let me just get rid of that line too so we don't have too much clutter. But I mean, this is a pretty crazy tread line that I'm about to draw here because look how steep this tread line is. Yet despite how steep it is, look how accurate it is. I mean, this just really goes to show how much selling pressure has shown up when you can draw a, a tread line. Now, of course, that tread line's not straight down, but it's got a definitely a very sharp downwards angle to it. And that's gonna be an area that from a you know, potential trade perspective, it presents a, a very interesting opportunity because again, I'm not saying that 
I have some sort of special ability to have seen and drawn that tread line. No, a lot of people have drawn that tread line. So it goes to reason while nothing is guaranteed from a valid, from a logical thought process, not a guaranteed thought process. I want to reiterate that, but it's more than plausible to think that if the price could, you know, get up to that tread line and get a break up through it, that that could create a nice little upside move. Now, I don't mean that that's going to send it back up to $21, but from a trading standpoint, you know, that could be give it a nice jolt of energy because people are going to be noticing, Hey, look, that tread line's breaking. Oh, I'm a breakout player. I should be buying. So keep an eye on that tread line from a resistance standpoint. And then as far as next potential areas of support are concerned, next key level to watch moving forward. Gonna be right down there. Let's see, what is that? The $15 and 40 cent mark. So keep an eye on 15.40. But yeah, overall, very, very nasty downwards move here. But you, you gotta think that if the price can push up through that tread line, that could bring uh, you know some interest back into it. Next one here, SPCE, and overall looking like it was uh, basically a one-day wonder. Not quite, but it's getting close to there. Uh, so, you know, a lot of, hey, Clay, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, it started off fantastic. I mean, look at that opening 30 minutes. Absolutely huge move. Came up here, found some resistance right up there at that pink line, which on my chart represents the very famous, and this is why it's famous, 200 period moving average. You can see it rejected the price uh, and, you know, never really got through it. But it's not like that was a problem because, I mean, that had already been a nice move. So had the price just chopped around sideways, okay, you would had a nice little, you know, bull flag, bull pennant type pattern. The problem is this thing just got smacked essentially right back down to where it started. Now, it didn't go completely to where it was, but that's why moving forward, the muscle level in my mind is going to be that 795 mark. And I'm not saying this will occur, but in the event that the price were to break down below 795, I mean, what's that doing to the price? It's quite literally putting the price right back to where it was before that big move right there. And not to insult your intelligence, but price movements that go back to where they were, not exactly a sign of true strength. So as far as, you know, important levels going forward, in my mind, for the logic just discussed, 795, definitely a must hold level. Next one here, SOFI, and this thing is absolutely bonkers, and this will mean a little bit more to those of you that watched the past video, and this will also be a quick little plug to just get signed up for the class. You gotta learn about charts. I promise, I have not just put this line in here, it was in here before I even recorded, and if you don't believe me, I'm not offended, I, I realize I could be a total stranger to you, but all you gotta do is go back in the video archive, watch the video that I did from yesterday, and you'll see I put that tread line in place. So the power of charts, are charts perfect? No, nothing is perfect. But are they a worthwhile tool that I would argue you need to have in your tool belt as a trader? Absolutely, but check this out. Put that tread line in place, look, it gapped up this morning, and what a surprise, right where it got rejected was that tread line. Absolutely crazy, but we're not done yet. Let me extend this tread line out. Make sure that it doesn't. And look at this. As we speak right now, the price hit that tread line and as of now is actually dropping. It's getting rejected as I speak. And that's why I like to do these when the market's still open. Let me try to zoom in here a little bit more. So you can see that candle. It's still shifting. Maybe the better way to see it is, that, you know, watching the price right there. But the price is once again at that tread line and once again rejected back down. But there are no guarantees, as I mentioned. So that doesn't necessarily mean that this rejection point is going to continue. But what it does mean, especially after this data point right here, is that there's just going to be so many more people now watching that tread line. So it goes back to the whole self-fulfilling prophecy attribute of things uh, that we had with AMC, where if the price can break through the tread line, sure, that doesn't mean that for sure guaranteed the price is going to shoot all the way up there. But could it produce at least some sort of tradable movement to the upside? Yeah, I think so. Uh, but it's absolutely crazy right now how well the, the price is respecting that tread line, um, which means there's just going to be that many more people paying attention to it. Next one, CEI, and this is on the list for a, a very simple reason. Uh, first, first reason, depending on how long you've been in the market, ho, ho, CEI should ring a bell. It went on an absolutely epic move. I don't know, back in uh, looking at another, back in looks like November. Yeah, so several, no, excuse me. September and October just went on a huge move and a sense collapsed, but now you have some volume coming back in. Now to be fair, maybe this is just a one day wonder. Maybe nothing's going to come from it, but it does allow us to now ask the question, Hey, is this the start of something much bigger to be fair? Maybe it's not, but maybe it is. That's a two sided coin. The core premise here is that in order to even ask the question, Hey, is this the start of something bigger? Well, something needs to first happen in the first place. And something did happen today. Big volume showed up a very impressive final 30 minutes as we're witnessing right now with the price continuing to move upwards. So yeah, is this going to be something where we look back on it a month from now and say, geez, remember when CEI was down at 60 cents? Now who knows? Maybe we'll look back at it and it'll be at 15 cents. But the point here is that's why we have watch lists. We notice things. We observe things and then want to watch them to see if there's anything more that comes from it. So CEI, especially if you like to play you know, penny stocks, definitely worth at least keeping an eye on. 
Next one, NIO, and want to get a couple levels in here. So let me get that level like that. Let me get that in like that. And I'll probably get in trouble here with some people to which I can understand. Maybe I'm, I'm trying to force a square peg through a round hole here. But, you know, this is what I would call, like I said, we'll call it a poor man's falling wedge, which is actually a bullish pattern. A rising wedge is actually a bearish pattern. But like I said, we'll call this a poor man's falling wedge, which, you know, makes this interesting. Now, let me be very clear. Just because something's a bullish pattern doesn't mean that for sure the price is going to go upwards. But would it shock anybody? No, because it's a bullish pattern. And in this situation, maybe just maybe we're going to see some sort of bounce off this trend line here. Uh, to, you know, get it back up over the $21 mark. And who knows, maybe even get up to that trend line and then potentially get a, a technical pattern breakout with the break up through that level. Of course, as always, and I'm going to keep reiterating this because I want people to understand there's no such thing as a guarantee. So just because you have this pattern doesn't mean that for sure. But my point here is, we want to avoid random situations as traders, right? We're not here to be degenerate gamblers. We're here to make logical. We're here to make plausible decisions. And it is plausible to think that, you know what? Maybe just maybe because of this falling wedge pattern, because of the price is at this lower trend line, that maybe some sort of bounce and revisit to this area could come or maybe, maybe even a breakout to the upside. But as always, that's why risk management matters. But if you are somebody that enjoys playing falling wedges, that they're one of my favorite patterns, then definitely keep, the, keep an eye on this one. Next one here, AMD. I know a very, very popular stock out there and not a whole lot to say other than the nice movement here that had shown up. I mean, from here up to here, that was looking good. And it became at that point a very valid question of, okay, yeah, maybe are the bulls back? Is this the start of something bigger? And no, this ultimately has now been confirmed after today as a dead cat bounce. What gives me the right to call that dead cat bounce? Well, I already used this logic earlier, but you know, the price is now down here, which when you match that up to over here is actually lower than where that bounce even started. So price movements with genuine power are not gonna not only go back to where they started, but lower, right? That doesn't make any sense. So yeah, this move right here, total dead cap bounce. Now that doesn't mean that AMD can't try to reverse around again and get back up here. But as far as you know, that bullishness that was starting to take place over the past couple of days, that has now all officially been wiped away. And you know, I would call that movement a dead cap bounce. If there is more downside to come, the next key, very uh, intriguing level of support gonna be down there right at the 107 mark, um, which seems, like, like it could very well be likely over the next few days. So we'll have to see what happens with it. And I think a lot of people will be watching that 107 mark. So you could definitely get some of that self-fulfilling type prophecy action associated with it. Next one here, OCGN and just a savage move. Um, did this one yesterday and want to quickly touch on it because there was this beautiful bull pennant pattern here. Uh, but the, the market just quickly destroyed that pattern with the big gap down. And then you can see right now, as I talk, the price is actually sitting right there at those lows. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these lines as they serve their purpose now. But the new interesting potential scenario is if this thing can get a bit more ugly, you know, there can be opportunity and ugly and sink down to this 295 mark. You know, there's some history here that this general area, or let's make it actually a support zone, or maybe you just wanna flat out say that, no, 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 the true support level is right down there at 287. I would not disagree with that. But my core premise here is that you look back here in the history and twice now the price has been down around that area, and in both situations, there has been a bounce. So once more, does that mean that if the price comes down here, oh, for sure it's gonna bounce? Absolutely not. But am I logical? Is it plausible to think that it could bounce? Well, absolutely, because it's bounced from there before. Whereas if I was sitting here saying it could bounce from that area and then it never has before, you'd be completely valid to say, what are you talking about, Clay? That's, that area seems kind of random. What makes you think it's gonna bounce from that area? But that's not the case here, right? I, there, there, it's happened twice. Doesn't mean that it'll happen a third time, but by no means could you accuse me of like just randomly throwing a dart and saying that a certain level could provide some sort of trade plan. So if this thing can get a bit more ugly down in that area, then you could have a very interesting risk versus reward trade setup. Next one here, Tesla TSLA, brutal day here and updates need to be made. Gonna go ahead and do some house cleaning and get rid of that level. And the first dynamic here, and which actually played out just as you would expect it. So as I've stated with that rule, when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance. And like I said, that actually played out here. So earlier on in the day, the price broke down below 800. Then there was that attempted bounce and actually a couple bounces right there rejected at 800, right there rejected at 800. So moving forward, if there is any sort of, you know, worthwhile bounces, that $800 mark is now definitely gonna be public enemy number one that a lot of people will be watching as resistance. And then as far as supports are concerned, I think we're gonna have to go back quite a bit because it has been a long time yeah, there we go, since Tesla has been down this low. So 800 key level of resistance. Oh, wow. And then next key level of support right down there, yeah, around the 760 mark. In fact, let's just do this. I'm just gonna change the daily time frame because it's, 
There we go. Let's zoom a little bit easier to see here. Uh, let's see. What is that? Yeah, right there at, uh, we'll call it 762. So basically right where the price is closing at today is an area of support. And then if that level can't quite hold up, next overarching level going to be right down there around the 745 mark. But yeah, overall brutal day for Tesla. Yesterday was the leading indicator as it broke down through that 200 day moving average, uh, that pink line there. Uh, but uh, we'll see how it plays out tomorrow. But yeah, uh, I'll be very interested to see if the price does come down to these areas of support for a potential bounce. So that wraps up the top 10. And again, like I started off the video saying, if you enjoyed what you saw here, you wanna learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency as a trader, then certainly get signed up for the free class. Like I said, it'll be very soon, Thursday, February 24th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So certainly get signed up for it. If you enjoy these top 10 watch lists, then please help me out with some basic communication. Hit the like button, leave a comment below. Let me know what you traded today. Just say hi. But those two things, hitting the like button, leaving a comment below, communicate to me that you enjoy these watch list videos. As long as I know people are enjoying, I will continue to watch them. So again, get signed up for the free class and hopefully I'll see you there.